Thank you, Sasha Guru. So today we are going to the ninth chapter, verse number 32. Mamhi Partha Vyapashritya Yepi Siu Papa Yoniya Striya Vaishya Stata Sudra Tepi Yanti Paramgatim. The translation is O son of Pritha, those who have taken shelter in me. Though they may be of lower birth, women, Vaishyas means merchants, and Sudras means workers, can attain the supreme destination. I don't know who's going to read the purport. Uh, Kirtika Mother, you can read the purport. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Perfect by Sri Divine Praise Bhakti Srila Prabhupada Jai. <clears throat> It is clearly declared here by the Supreme Lord that in devotional service, there is no distinction between the lower and the higher classes of people. In the material conception of life, there are such divisions, but for a person engaged in transcendental devotional service to the Lord, there are not. Everyone is eligible for supreme destination. <clears throat> In the Srimad Bhagavatam 2.4.18, it is stated that even the lowest who are called chandalas, the dog eaters, can be purified by association with the pure devotee. Therefore, devotional service and guidance of pure devotee are so strong that there is no discrimination between the lower and higher classes of men. Anyone can take to it. The most sim simple man taking shelter of the pure devotee can be purified by proper guidance. According to the different modes of material nature, men are classified in the mode of goodness, brahmanas, the mode of passion, kshatriyas or administrators, the mixed modes of passion and ignorance, vaishyas or merchants, and the mode of ignorance, shudras or workers. Those lower than them are called chandalas and they are born in sinful families. Generally, the association of those born in the sinful families is not accepted by high, higher classes, but the process of devotional service is so strong that the pure devotee of the Supreme Lord can enable people of all the lower classes to attain the highest perfection of life. This is possible only when one takes shelter of Krishna. As indicated here by the word Vyapasritya, one has to take shelter completely of Krishna. Then one can become much greater than the great jnanis and yogis. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mother. Okay. This verse is, O son of Pritha, those who take shelter in me, though they may be of lower birth, women, vaishas, and sutras can attain the supreme destination. Now, here Shaprabhat makes very clear that in Christian consciousness, there is no distinction between the higher or lower classes of people. You'd find that when this Bhagavad is being spoken or was being spoken at that time, Varnashram system was very strong. And in, at that time, 
according to Varnashram system, is the higher and the lower classes. And even why higher? Brahmins are considered to be the highest because they are very conscious of Krishna, very close to Krishna. Kshatriyas come the second. Whereas Vaishyas and Sudras are considered to be lower class, not lower, higher, but not very close in spiritual life. I mean, not very advanced in spiritual life because most of their time goes in business or farming and very less time for spiritual life. And as far as women are also concerned, according to our national system, they were very busy running after the home. I mean, maintaining the home. And as far as sutras are concerned, they are also considered to be lower class because they do a lot of labor and have no time for spiritual life. However, Sri Prabhupada says, there is no distinction in spiritual life between higher or lower classes. So in Krishna consciousness, everyone stands an equal chance to become a devotee. That's why in a moment you'll find Sri Prabhupada made no distinctions. He followed the Bhagavad Gita the way it is and the way the Acharyas have explained Krishna consciousness that in wherever Krishna consciousness movement was taken or went, people became devotees. Sri Prabhupada never saw who is a man, who is a woman, who is children. Not only that Prabhupada is so merciful, he did not even see that people came from a very sinful background. That's why Sri Prabhupada, when he gave initiation to many devotees in the beginning, especially Brahmin, uh, Brahmin initiation, many caste Brahmins from India took objections. That why are you giving initiation to these people who were formerly meat eaters? They were not fairly following or following very culture. But this is an extra mercy of Sri Prabhupada that he allowed anyone to join Krishna consciousness, practice Krishna consciousness. But remember the words of Sri Prabhupada. Sri Prabhupada says, once you take up the chanting process, then give up all your sinful activities immediately and don't go back to that life. Very, very heavy statement, especially for those who take initiation. They have to be very careful Having taken initiation, you should not go back to our old ways. Many of us, before initiation, may have done sinful activities or may have come from a background which is not very Brahminical, but it doesn't matter. If you take out of the chanting process, which is a purificatory process, then we should not go back to it. Because on the day of initiation, according to Chitin Chatamrita, Krishna, the, Krishna Das Kavirat says, whoever takes initiation becomes qualitatively as good as Krishna. He becomes so pure. With the scripture master, he accepts the reaction. Actually, it's Krishna who takes up reactions. And he lets go all your sinful activities. But from that day onwards, no one should sin. Or follow the regulatory principles, chant your number of rounds, and advance in Krishna consciousness. And day by day, try to surrender more and more and more so that you become so purified that before the death comes, you're eligible to go back home, back to God. So that's the first point Sri Prabhupada makes. Now, the distinctions which are in the society are more or less on a bodily conception. Bodily conception means Someone says this is a man, this is a woman, this is a black, this is white, this is this religion, there is that religion. So Narad Muni, who is the actual guru of bhakti. Now for your information, Brahma has three different sons who have taken up three different sections of the Vedas. Vedas has three sections. Upashnakan, Gyanakan, Karmakand. Now we go to the Karmakand. The most expert son of Brahma is Daksha. Daksha happens to be the father of Sati, who marries Lord Shiva. And this Daksha, the word very, the very word Daksha means very expert. He was expert at creating progeny. And he was very expert at Karmakanda. 
So that is the first son. I mean, the son who is, I mean, who is educating Karma Khanda. As far as Jnana Khanda is concerned, then is the four Kumaras, the sons of Brahma again, celibate sons. Of course, later on, they, be, they took up devotional service, but they practice Jnana Khanda. And as far as Upashna Khanda is concerned, the worship of Krishna and also of demigods, then the most powerful son of Brahma is Narad Muni. Now, Narad Muni, he gives this verse, very important verse, many of you may have heard, if you're accustomed to hear Sri Prabhupada regularly, Sarva Upadi Vidir Mukta Tat Paratvena Nirmalam Rishikesha Rishikeda Semanam Bhakti Uchite. That one has to rise above the bodily platform, rise above the bodily platform, don't call yourself that you are a male or a female or a, what do you call it? this color, that color, that religion, that religion, whatever you are, you have to rise above this platform. So in this word, it says Sarva Upadi. Upadi means moment you see it on a bodily platform, you cannot practice devotional service. Never do that. Never consider yourself to be a male or a female or whatever. We are all actually belonging to Prakriti. Prakriti means female. The only male or the governing male is Krishna himself. So Narmuni says, Sarva Upadi Virid Mukta Tatpara Tveda Nirmalam. Nirmalam means make your mind nirmal, pure. Rise above this bodily concept of life. And then you, when you render service to Krishna, that is called a pure devotional service or a right way or right angle to engage in devotional service. So in devotional service, one should never see anyone on a bodily platform. Not only that, Sri Prabhupada makes it clear, if you, be, if you happen to have association, even Vaishnava should never be seen that this is an American Vaishnava, an African Vaishnava, an Indian Vaishnava, no. A Vaishnava can be from any background. No jati, no janma. No jati, no janma means we don't see people by birth or by their caste or their backgrounds. Vaishnava means a Vaishnava. And you have to pay all the respects to a Vaishnava. This question was raised in front of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that in the first meeting, this basic question was asked that how do you recognize a Vaishnava? Is the Vaishnava is the one from whose mouth you can hear the holy name of Krishna? Anyone who is, a, who is habituated to chant Hare Krishna is a Vaishnava. At that time, he's not a male or a female or this or that. We should give that. That is called Sarva Upadi Virid Mukta. So, this was the definition, or this is the definition given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is none different from Krishna. Now, everyone has a birthright to engage in Krishna consciousness. Everyone is allowed. It's not that. This is not, this person not allowed, that person not allowed, because he comes from a bad family, not allowed. He comes from a good family, so he should be allowed. No. Anyone who has taken up the process is allowed and can engage. And as you advance in Krishna consciousness, or anyone who's engaged, I mean, advancing in Krishna consciousness, at least for some time, or anyone who's been chanting for some time, should give up this dirty vision. It's an impure vision that you see people in a form of what our eyes is saying. We should not see by, with our eyes the form of a person. We should see Krishna in the heart of that person. Even in a normal Vedic culture, when people greet each other, they fold hands and they say Namaskar. Namaskar means, let me worship the Lord in your heart, or I pay respects to the Lord in your heart. Such a good way of greeting each other. This is a basic way of greeting each other. In our Iskand or in the Vaishnava Parampara, we say Hare Krishna, which actually means Radhe Krishna. So this is the way we greet each other. So everyone by Sri Prabhupada, these are actual words of Sri Prabhupada. Prabhupada. Prabhupada says everyone has a birthright to engage in Krishna consciousness, to accept Krishna and go back to Krishna. That is allowed. 
Now, this verse is quoted from Srimad Bhagavatam, which is many, uh, quoted in the purport 2.4.18. The verse is Kirata, Hunna, Anga, Pushaka, and so on. These are all different, different communities or societies who came from very, I mean, those who were engaged in sinful activities, but they also became purified by engaging in Krishna consciousness, including people who are dog eaters. You find that presently, if you go to China, many people are, most Chinese, they eat dog meat. But if they take up Krishna consciousness, or those who have taken up Krishna consciousness, they are not seen to be, or not, we do not call them dog eaters anymore. They are also called the Vaishnavas. And I have heard, or, and even seen, there are people who come from China also. They are also devotees of Krishna. And once they were Vaishnava at, um, attire, they look people of Vaikuntha. So are the people of Africa. If you see them with the tilak, they look so beautiful. So we should not see people with the external feature. See that Krishna is in the heart. Anyone who is a tilak on the head, it means that he has a respect for Krishna. This tilak also has a very big meaning. So two things are very, very powerful, which Prabhupada is mentioning here. One is the path of devotional service, which in short, we call it Krishna consciousness. And the second one is the guidance of a pure devotee. These things are so powerful that they, there is no question of discrimination between lower or higher. For example, we have three good examples in this in our Shastras. One is Valmiki, originally coming from a, a hunter's community. He became purified and became a pure Vaishnava, devotee of the Lord. Then we have Mirgari the hunter, who also came from a hunting or from a sinful community, he became a pure devotee. In Ramayana, if you go, there's a Sabari. Sabari literally means people who keep pigs. She became a pure devotee. So three good examples we have. And each one of them went to a, such a high level of Krishna consciousness that they attained the lotus feet of Krishna. So we should not see in which background someone has come. Many examples are there. In, even in our movement, so many examples are there. People who come from so many bad backgrounds, having joined, or having accepted Krishna conscious movement, I mean, Krishna conscious process, the process is so powerful that it purifies that person. So one is the process. The other one is if you live under the shelter of a pure devotee, you become purified. It does not matter who you are. So in, in ISKCON, we all try to see association of pure devotees. By doing so, <clears throat> there'll be so much gain in your Krishna consciousness process that you'll go on and on. Well, the first effect of a, meeting a pure devotee is they immediately after meeting a pure devotee, they give you a kind of a enhancement, a kind of strength. Yes, this is Krishna consciousness. And all the misgivings are, are taken away. And effect is after hearing them, one will become Krishna conscious and one will never give up chanting. These are the effects of meeting a pure devotee. That at once you feel the purity, so much purity. And this meeting can be just a minute, not even more than that. But if you are getting a little more association, then you are very, very fortunate. That's why we find that even the history of our ISKCON says that all the people who had met his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada, they were very, very fortunate. And all the disciples of Prabhupada, even if you meet them even today, they are very different. Their whole generation was very different. Once a friend of mine, I'll give you my realization, he came to our office and there was a Back to Garden magazine. So he was going through the pictures. Old Back to Garden magazines had to have many, many used to have many pictures. 
So he showed me a picture in which the devotees were doing Harinam. And this, I think, is in the New York City. And everyone is wearing yellowish clothes, means not even orange, not even saffron. The ladies were wearing literally cloth. They were not original saris from India. And men were wearing even, maybe they had cut from a do, uh, bad shit and they had made it like a dhoti. But the picture, if you see, the kind of ecstasy you see in those devotees, hands raised and doing kirtan in a whole group. This picture is so attractive that he himself commented, you can see the purity in this picture. And this picture is way back, either in 70 or 71. You see that powerful picture. And he commented, can this purity come again? Not easy. Why the purity was there? Because Sri Prabhupada was there. Sri Prabhupada was very, very pure. That people, the devotees were very hard working. From morning till night, they worked so hard. They'll attend morning program. After the morning program, they'll go out to preach, to do Harinam, to distribute books, whole day. In the evening, they'll return by around 5, 36, take a bath, and they lived a very austere life. This is the life which we live in Iskand. It's not all that austere. Now we have nice temples, nice, nice places to stay, nice facilities, hot water you can get, <laughs> so many things you can get. But in those days, it was not easy. But the purity was there, so much purity, that if you happen to meet even one of those devotees, they, you'd be attracted to them. And they will tell you, okay, come, come, come to our temple. Even if you meet them in the street, they'll invite you. And if you go to temple, such a nice reception and such a nice prasadam. Though the prasadam was not all that opulent the way we are enjoying now. Very simple prasad, but whatever it is, there was more purity because Sri Prabhupada was very pure. So this is, I'm giving you an example of if you meet a pure devotee. So these are two effects I think everyone will remember. One is the process, which is bhakti yoga or Christian consciousness. Second is association of pure devotee. So even the simplest person can take shelter of a pure devotee and become purified. So in this, Popo Shri Prabhupada says that there are different varnas if you follow the Vanashram system. There are Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishya Sutras. And you all know that Brahmins means not by birth, but by nature, those people are in the mode of goodness. They are considered Brahmins. Those who are in the mode of passion are Kshatriyas, and those who are in the mixed mode of passion and ignorance are called Vaishyas. And those who are in the ignor uh, mode of ignorance are the Sutras. So it's by the mode people are divided, yet serving the same person, Lord Vishnu or Krishna. It does not matter whether you're Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Sutra. Everyone has the right to worship Krishna. And Krishna is the central point. As you read Bhagavad Gita later on, if you go to the 18th chapter, verse number 42 onwards, Krishna tells Arjun that what are the qualities of a Brahmin, qualities of a Vaishya, Sudra, or Kshatriyas? But later on, Krishna says, by worship of the Supreme Person, one can attain the same destination. So it does not matter. If from what community or what class classification you come from, you can all rise, or every one of us can rise to the platform of Krishna consciousness. So even chandalas or the very low class of people can be raised to the highest. And so you find that as the years go by, people do realize that there's nothing like Krishna consciousness. If you practice Krishna consciousness, you'd feel that purity even within you. I can even assure you, give you a guarantee that anyone who has chanted at least for five years, I'm not saying more, even five years, the effect of chanting is that person will feel 
that I was so impure. And I feel so, I mean, I feel purity in me. And after, if I continue like this, after five years, I'll become a better person. That is the assurance I can give you. But provided you follow the process. Our whole Krishna consciousness is dependent on how well we chant our daily rounds. Very, very important. You find that our mood of chanting or our, what do you call, bhava, bhava means attraction for chanting may go up and down. But you should not give up your chanting. Go on chanting. At least do your prescribed number of rounds and then try to remember Krishna. For example, like today is Ekadashi and devotees chant 25 rounds. And you feel so good that if you chanted your 25 rounds or a normal day, your 16 rounds, that you, you feel that you've done your work for today. But you may have done so many other things like collecting money for the temple, building a temple, preaching, so many things, but you're not chanted your rounds, you'll find something missing. What gives us a strength is the process. What is the process? To chant Hare Krishna, to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. These things can uplift anyone. Even the most fallen person can be uplifted. In the purport or in the verse, the verse Vyapashvitya, very, very important. The meaning Vyapashvitya means to completely take shelter of Krishna. Complete means a hundred percent. Krishna says this towards the end of the Bhagavad Gita. Sarva dharma paritajya ma mekam sharan vaja aham to sarva papi bhyo moksha shami mahasya. Means when you take shelter, you take a hundred percent shelter. Not 99. You find many devotees. I have seen, I have come across devotees who even after initiating, getting initiation, they want to serve Krishna. They have taken shelter of Krishna consciousness, but they also serve maybe out of family tradition, some demigod worship, some fastings. This is not, it means they are not serious. Anyone who is serious, he'll take a hundred percent shelter of Krishna and that's it. No need to follow anything else. I mean, no need to worship anyone else, only Krishna. Simply worship of Krishna, that is called complete shelter of Krishna, which in the 19th, I'm sorry, 18th chapter, Krishna tells us, I can go to the verse and read the verse for you. I think it's 54 or 57. Um, 57, it says, in all activities just depend upon me and work always under my protection. In such devotional service, be fully conscious of me. Very powerful verse. You can note it down, 1857, where Krishna says that depend on me and live under my protection. What did the Pandavas do? The Pandavas remained under the protection of Krishna and they were always protected. Chaitanya Chaitanya I think I already quoted this verse earlier. Mare Krishna Rakhi Ke, Rakhi Krishna Mare Ke. Anyone who is protected by Krishna cannot be harmed by anyone. And anyone who, who is to be killed by Krishna, no one can protect him. So remember this simple words of Chaitanya Chaitanya or the guarantee which is given that once you, are, you live under the protection of Krishna, then Krishna will fully take responsibility. And he gives this guarantee, not once, but many, many times. In Bhagavad Gita, even in Rama and Lord Ramachandra says the same thing. Sakradeva prapanno tava ashvita yachate. Very powerful verse. Where he says, you just have to take shelter, maybe just once. After that, Krishna will take care of you. So many of you may say, oh, I, I did take shelter and now I have given up. Given up. Maybe you have given up. But Krishna has not given you up. Krishna will take care and he will protect you. I have many examples here in Nairobi Temple. There are devotees who take shelter of Bhakti Pihari and later maybe 
when they become well off or something, they give up. But then after many years, again, they come back. Because they'll never find anyone like our Radha Banki Bihari. They say, oh, whatever it is, there's nothing like him. Means you have to have a personal relationship with Krishna. I can give you one very simple example, which is a true example. It was in the old temple. Now we have the old temple. The day they used to come a family, um, a father, a mother, a daughter, and a son. And they were going through very difficult times. So they would come to temple every morning and every evening. And they, they came for at least two to three years. And then all of a sudden they disappeared. And then after some years I asked, I happened to meet this man. I said, how come you stopped coming to temple? He says, now there's no time. I said, why? He says, I don't know, but those are difficult times I used to come. But now Krishna has given me so much that I have no time but just to look after my business. I think he, ran, he was running a forex bureau. And later on, they all went to America. But he, he admitted, yes, it is true. Whatever I am, whatever I've gotten from this temple is all from Krishna. So it's a true example that many people, they take shelter of Krishna. Once they become well off, they give up Krishna consciousness, but one should not do that. This gratitude should not be given up. You should always remember that if ever you have advanced in your life, if ever you become anything, it's because of Krishna. And those who are devotees, they should never forget that whatever we have or whatever we are, we are getting all from the mercy originally coming from Shri Prabhupada. He's the one giving his mercy to everyone. If someone happens to travel to India, you know that even now, even in our Iskand temples, uh, not many temples, I have not seen any temple where they will allow ladies to go to the altar. But Shri Prabhupada allowed. In India, maybe the, the Hindus that don't like ladies doing puja or something. But in Oiskan temples, Shri Prabhupada allowed. Prabhupada did not distinguish between a male and a female. Once they become pure, Prabhupada says is equal. You don't see someone as a male, someone as a female. Of course, there's no mixing, but we do not see external bodies of the people. We I mean, in Krishna consciousness, everyone is equal. So you find that if you name the devotees of Krishna, you'll find young boys, young girls, elderly men, elderly people, Brahmins, no Brahmins, even Chanalas, even lowest kind of people. And they have become best devotees of Krishna. The history is there. The whole Bhagavatam is there to explain to you who and who became what. For example, like we, devotees in our Gaudiya Vaishnava, Gaudiya Vaishnava is follows of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that you have to take the shelter of the gopis. Gopi, Bhartu, Kamalo, Das, Anudas, Anudas. Now if someone is on a bodily platform, he says, oh, you are worshipping gopis. Gopis are women. Why are you worshipping them? but they are the best devotees. This is the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's statement. We cannot change it. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, these are the best samples of devotee in the whole creation. And so if you go to a Mahaprabhu temple, it's not just Radha Krishna. There's also Ashta Shapis. Four gopis that side, four gopis that side. Ashta Shapis, these are the, they are all worshipped. Though by nature, what do you call, by our uh, materialize, we may see, oh, these are women, but actually it is not like that. And His Holiness Bhakti Bharatwaraj was explaining that very nice example he gave from the scriptures that when Lord Shiva wanted to see the Rasa dance, he was not allowed because Lord Shiva doesn't have all that purity, though he's the purest, very as good as Lord Vishnu, but yet he was not allowed but he had to take his shelter 
of Tulsi. Tulsi Maharani means Vrinda Devi. Vrinda Devi, she gave the shelter to Lord Shiva. But even at that time, Lord Shiva had to change the body to a female body. Then he, had to, he was allowed to enter the Rasa dance. Even Lakshmi Ji, imagine is a wife of Narayan. When she was to, to take the shell of the gopis, what did she say? Oh, oh, who are gopis? These are unlearned women, damsels of Vrindavan. They don't even know how to read or write. I am the wife of Lord Vishnu. I sit on the chest. I mean, I am like emblem of the chest of Lord Vishnu. How can they, I mean, how am I not qualified to enter the Rasdans? But even she was not allowed. Because she was too proud. So even if you go to Vrindavan, even today, she is still there performing tapa because she says, I'll perform tapasya and then I'll seek, I mean, I'll get an entry into Rasa dance, but she was not allowed. So if someone wants to enter into the deep pastimes of Radha and Krishna, one is to come out of this bloodily platform of a male, female, or whatever it is, raise your self uh, to such a pure uh, level that you can enter into the realm of devotional service or in other words pure devotional service ordinary devotional service is okay but pure devotional service means you have to completely rise above the bodily platform of way of life. that's why this word should be remembered on almuni sarvopadi vinimukta Tatparatvena Nirmalam Rishikesha Rishikena Sevanam Bhakti Chite. Rise about this. This is what the verse is trying to tell you. The whole meaning of this, in fact, the main point of this verse is that, that take shel taking shelter of Krishna does not depend on external qualifications now. To, become, to take shelter of Krishna depends on your internal qualification. How much your heart has been given to Krishna? which will be mentioned in the 12th chapter. Mayeva manodachva may buddhi nimesha. Krishna tells Arjuna, give your mind intelligence to me. That is called complete shelter. And that is what the gopis gave. They gave their mind and intelligence 100% of Krishna. Okay, so we end up here. Hare Krishna. I hope you understood this verse. The main point is that to take shelter of Krishna, you do not need to consider your bodily conception. Of, uh, I mean, your bodily uh, qualification, no. You, you, it is what is in your heart really matters. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, anyone else has got any questions? Time is already up. <laughs> Hare Krishna Prahlad has a question and then Kruti has a question. Hare Krishna Prahlad. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu, you had spoken about ordinary, ordinary and pure devotional service. So, yes. Let's say if um, I'm, I'm speaking from a probable example, like mm. let's say I have a Krishna Murti or even a picture of Krishna, and I'm serving mm. food, mm. get back as prasadam, and mm. you know, just continuously living on. Like I am offering mm. the without any desire that that oh, I want this, mm. you know, because I've been serving mm. you, mm. just serving prasadam mm. from my heart. Mm. Yeah. Now, that is that counted as ordinary or pure? Or, or is pure devotional service something like chanting 45 or even 35 rounds in a day? Okay, now your question is, is, this, is that regarded pure devotional service or ordinary? Pure devotional service, as I define, means if your heart is in there, that is pure devotional service. It does not matter. You can be just, enter, you may be just entering boga. Boga means before eating, you offer food to Krishna. That is called bhoga. If you are giving with love and devotion, that is pure devotional service. Not that you are chanting 45 rounds or 60 rounds. 
but your heart is not there. What really counts is what is coming from your heart. If that's why this word, we are past here. If you go to the verse, do you have Bhagavad Gita in your hand? In the today's verse, if you see the word, we are past here. We are past means particularly taking shelter. When your heart is put at the feet of Krishna, whether you're offering bhoga or you're chanting Hare Krishna, you're performing arati, you're doing preaching, you're distributing books, anything. But if your heart is in Krishna, you're taking full shelter of Krishna, that is per devotional service. Yes. Is that clear? Yes. All right. Oh. I can give you one example in, of uh, my, my real lifetime. Uh, first time when I went to Mayapur, of course, it was way back in 90s. And I had to go by train because my mother had a desire. So I took my mother and we took a train which took us 36 hours from Bombay. In those days, it was called Bombay now. And now it's called Mumbai. And when we reached Calcutta, I mean, during the train journey, we had one devotee who was playing a guitar, I mean, a white, yeah, what do you call, someone from a year three. He did not know he was to speak English, English, but he was playing guitar and he's also eating vegetarian food. But surprisingly, when we reached Calcutta Temple, he also came with us and asked him, where are you from? He said, I'm from Russia. <laughs> and in the morning, because I have a habit of waking up very early and chanting and doing some worship, even he was doing worship and he had with him a plastic murti plastic statue and I saw him he was worshiping that plastic statue and then he took out a guitar and he was chanting Hare Krishna and I really felt that he's so pure and he was a young boy maybe 18 19 years old boy but I felt that attraction that so much purity is there in him so that is example I had and luckily we again we melted my apple. Okay, uh, Pralad Prabhu, is yes, it clear? Before, uh, before uh, you are where your heart is. <laughs> yes. Uh, before Kruti asks her question, now one one teensy clarification here. Now, when mm -hmm. uh, now you're specified on, you know, uh, so should I say differentiated between ordinary and uh, pure devotional service. Now. Mm. How do we know for sure if our heart is really mm. like to be honest? Some people they may mm. just, just be there, like probably if they're not if they're not desiring something, but mm. it's just <clears throat> a feeling that is it's not from the heart. Mm. And probably they may not know it. So how do you know for certain that it's from the heart? Okay, in the scriptures, there's a verse which says, pure devotional service is very rare, and a pure devotee is also very rare. Does that answer your question? Even if you perform devotional service daily, it is only rarely we can offer pure devotional service. Even chanting, to do pure chanting is only done sometimes. Somehow or other, we try to finish our rounds. But pure chanting only is sometimes. So it's not easy. So again, the answer is, if you're doing from your heart, you yourself will feel the sensation. No need to ask anyone else. Prabhupada gives an example that if you are hungry and if someone gives you a plate of prasada, you don't need to ask that whether you are full or not. The moment you are start eating, a time comes when you feel, okay, now I have enough. In the similar way, you yourself will feel the purity if you engage yourself in any devotional service with all your heart. It is natural because Krishna is in the heart of everyone. Okay? Pralad? Yes. yes, thank you, Prabhu. Okay. okay. Hare Krishna Kruti, kindly ask your question. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Yeah, I wanted to ask, uh, like, before you, um, like, when you started the explanation, you said when we, when we become Krishna conscious, we have to 
we have to leave the bad deeds, bad actions. So, but but even if we are in Krishna consciousness, sometimes uh, like we tend to be envious. Sometimes ang anger arises and all these stuffs. Even if we are in Krishna consciousness and we are learning, like we should avoid it. And yet sometimes mm. it still occurs. So how do you deal with it? Or uh, yeah. Okay. Now what I had actually mentioned in the class is that if you take another Krishna conscious process, deal with the sinful activities. Yes, <clears throat> in our daily life there is envy, there is anger, which cannot be given up easy, very difficult. But the process is so pure that in the due course it will vanish. It will go away completely. For example, like I'll give you an example. Uh, in your house. Uh, if you notice, there's a water supply and there's a tank upstairs, I mean, on the roof, yeah? Most houses have a tank on the top. I don't know, uh, do you have a uh, water tank up or in the ground yes, yes, in your house? Do. Yes, we do. Okay. Now, one day, if you look in the tank, the water is very pure on the top. If you look down in the, in the tank itself, you find certain side is dirty because all the dust and dirt sinks down. In the similar way, even in our heart, the dirtiest part is the envy. It is there and it does not go for many, many years. However, if you take the shelter of pure devotees and as proper mentions here and Krishna consciousness, even that will be removed completely. So sometimes when you become angry, Sometimes there's a tendency to do sinful activity. But that does not mean that you go and do sinful activities. Or if you are becoming angry, then don't feel all that guilty. Slowly, it will go away. The faith in Krishna consciousness should be kept very strong. And all those other activities, they'll slow, slowly, 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 slowly go down. Automatically. Because the process is very powerful. So one must have faith in the process itself. Just like in this chapter. Do you have a Bhagavad Gita in your hand? Yes. Can you read the verse number three? Of uh, chapter nine? Yeah, same, same chapter. So nine three, that's what you want me to read, sorry? Yeah. Okay. Those who are not faithful in their devotional service cannot attain me, O conqueror of enemies. Therefore, they return to the path of birth and death in this material world. Okay, now if you study this verse technically, Krishna could have said those who don't have faith in me. What does Krishna say? Those who don't have faith in devotional service. You notice that verse? Yes. He says it very clearly. Many of us see, think that, okay, I have faith in Krishna, that is enough. No. You have to have faith in the process also. The process is more important than Krishna, let me tell you. If your process is not pure, how will you get Krishna? That's why Prabhupada emphasizes us to chant Hare Krishna. Why? Because if you don't have faith in chanting, you, you are not going to get Krishna. If you don't have faith in the words of Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam, you're not going to get Krishna. The whole important thing is the process. Yes, as far as we have this material body, you'll find that there is a tendency to think in a sinful way. There's a tendency to, to be deviated from the process, but do not give it up. You still hold it. You keep up the process, don't give up your process. Your daily sadhan, your daily process is, has to be practiced. Bhajan, sadhan means your daily hearing, daily chanting is called bhajan. Process means the sadhan. Don't give it up. Once you're taken shelter of Krishna, don't give it up. Yes, obstacles will be there. Difficulties will be there. Your own heart will say, oh, now I'm doing wrong and let me give it up. Don't give it up. 
In the due course, you'll become purified. What is purifying is not you. What is purifying is the process. So why give up the process? For example, uh, maybe you may have been to a doctor and the doctor prescribes you five-day antibiotic, yeah? Now you say that, okay, after the third day, I'm okay. So those two days, I'm not going to take antibiotic. But then that sickness can come back to you. You have to finish your, pro your what do you call it? Your prescription in the similar way. Our prescription is to channel Krishna to the end of the life. We don't give up that prescription. I think you understand that. I mean, yes. uh, you know, I mean, what nice. I'm like, all right. Thank don't you so give much. up. Chanting Hare Krishna, never give it up. Four regulatory principles, don't give it up. These things will come even when you don't want to do. And this is one of the questions which is asked in the third chapter. Arjun is asking Krishna, what is that force which makes us commit sin unwillingly? What is it? And Krishna does give you answer in that end of the last section of the third chapter. Last may appear in a different, different ways. It tries to catch you. So there is always a constant struggle between lust and love of Krishna. We should not take the side of the lust. We take the side of the love of Krishna. That is our victory. And we have to fight. One who can't fight cannot be called a devotee. Okay? Yes, thank you so much. Hare Krishna. All right. Anybody else? Has a question? Hare Krishna. Richa has a question. Richa Mataji, kindly ask your question. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Danwat Prana. Uh, my question is Danu that. Um, uh, my question is that when we were talking about the, um, the Rasalila part, uh, aren't mm. we all uh, part and parcel of Krishna and energies of Krishna? And it is also said that we do have the qualities of uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, just not in quantities. Mm. So what is the exact reason why we aren't allowed for it if we are part and parcel of Krishna? I have another question, but I'll ask after this. No, so you and I don't understand this question. What are we not allowed? Like, like uh, to, to attend the Rasa Leela or see Radha and Krishna perform Rasa Leela, we require a certain qualification. But we are part and parcel of Krishna. We do have mm. the qualities of him, not in terms of quantity, but like qualities we do have. So what such makes us... Um, but like, why is the main reason that we cannot even watch uh, Radha and Krishna perform uh, Rasa Leela? Even though we, like, we can say that we are generated from Krishna. We are the energies of Krishna. Okay, I understand your question. Okay, uh, are you in Nairobi? Uh, yes, I am. Are you allowed to come to temple? Uh, no. Why? Uh, because of corona. Because of corona. In the similar way, if we do not take shelter of the gopis, if we are not purified, it means we are still having that corona. <laughs> we want to take shelter of Krishna directly, which is not allowed. We take shelter of Krishna through the gopis or the servants and servants of servants of gopis. For example, you know the six Goswamis, isn't it? Yes. Sri Rupa Goswami, Sanatan. Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, then Raghunath, Raghunath, Bhatt Goswami, Jiva Goswami, Gopal Bhatt. This is the sixth Goswami. Who are they? They are the servitors of gopis, of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, sorry. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, I am the servitor of the gopis. So we take the shelter of the shelter of the disciple, I mean, sorry, the servant of the servant of the servant. You cannot break that system and try to enter the Rasa dance, which will not be allowed. We have to follow the system, the protocol. We can't jump. That's why Lakshmi Ji was not allowed. She wanted to jump. And she's not allowed even till today. It's a deep subject matter, but anyway, it's not that you are not allowed, you're allowed, but you follow the system, what has been given to you. Is it clear? 
Uh, yes, it is. I also have another question, Prabhu. I understood mm -hmm. this one. So basically, we we understand. Uh, okay, I, like there is. Um, I probably I heard it in a lecture that every soul, uh, even in a even in a male body or a male gender, is a female. Mm -hmm. So yes. how do we understand that concept? I explained to you right in the beginning of the class. I think you joined late. Uh, yeah. The beginning of the class explained that only Purusha is Krishna. All other jivas, they all are living and it is we all belong to Prakriti. Prakriti means our body comes from Prakriti. Krishna is self-born. Means Krishna. <laughs> there is no original. Krishna himself is the originator of everything. So Krishna is the only Purusha. We are all belonging to Prakriti. Is it okay? Yes, I understand that. Yes, thank you so much. Right. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. We have a question from Vishakha Mataji. Vishakha Mataji, kindly ask, unmute and ask your question. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. It's a very, you know, it's similar to uh, Vishya Mataji's question, but, uh, you know, when you said Lord Shiva could not also enter because you need to be pure devotee, extremely pure devotee. But don't we count Lord Shiva as the Mahadev, like he's the, he's the, he's the highest devotee of all. So, you know, through him, we can get the bhakti and all that. So how yeah. could that be? You know, how, why oh. was... <laughs> yeah. Okay, I explained to you, maybe you did not hear nicely. When Lord Shiva wanted to enter the Rasa dance, he had to take the shelter of the gopis. Now, if you say, who are more educated, who are more learned. Lord Shiva is much more learned than gopis. But why he was told to take the shelter of gopis? That is a system. And he did follow the system and he was allowed. And when he entered Rasa dance, Lord Krishna said, oh, you left Bar uh, Parvati and you have come alone. <laughs> Krishna caught him. Is it okay? So we are not condemning Lord Shiva. We are not saying Lord Shiva is not pure. No. We have to go Gopi Bharto. Remember this verse, this uh, Sanskrit. Gopi Bharto Kamalo Das Anudas Anudas. That we, are, we take the shelter of the Gopis. We become their servants. Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even though he doesn't say that I am qualified. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, I am the servitor of the Gopis. And the sixth Goswami says, we take the shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then all the acharis for the six Goswami, even Prabhupada himself says, I am the service of the six Goswamis. In this way, we take the shelter of the, the parampara, the disciplic succession. We do not jump the line. That's not good manners, even in the material world. If there's a queue, we don't jump the queue. In the same way, even in devotional service, we don't jump the queue. Is it okay? You. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Even Lord Shiva is the most learned in the, uh, the learned living entity in the entire creation. Scriptures say like that. As far as Bhagavatam is concerned, <laughs> Lord Shiva knows it by heart, the whole Bhagavatam, which others may not know it. Lord Shiva is known as very learned in Shrimad Bhagavatam, as good as we asked them. All right. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I know we have exhausted our time, but there is a burning question from Richa. So we'll take that as the last one and then hand over to Path Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry for taking too much time. Uh, my last question, Prabhu, is that uh, we know the differences between the material world and the spiritual world and that it's a complete tree, a reflection of tree in the water. Is there any similarity I, it just came, I just got this question right now. Is there even one similarity between the material world and the spiritual world? Similarity? Yeah. Anything material is an opposite of spiritual world. So you can't call it a similarity. The only similarity we can have is that we are spiritual and Krishna is spiritual. That is the only similarity. Now that is in a spiritual sense, not in a material sense. Jivere Sarupai Krishna Nitya Das. Oh, Krishna said, 
we have done that was i mean we will come across that was in the 15th chapter mame vaso jiva loke jiva bhuta sana all the living entities are my part and passers that means krishna is like fire we are like the sparks of the fire so that is the similarity but that is on a spiritual platform not in the material platform if you go to the 15th chapter anything in the material world is a perverted reflection of the spiritual world it's an upside down tree is it okay Thank yes you, there, there is there is one uh, one interesting uh, aspect which proper gives is the only pure love you can see in the material world is between the mother and a child this is proper's words maybe that is a similarity Hare Krishna, thank you so much. All right, welcome. Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Prabhuji. Uh, all the concepts have been really clarified to the simple level. I hand over to Path Prabhuji. Path Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, Dandutmana. Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for your class and wonderful. You explain all the doubts and everything. <clears throat> Prabhuji, one doubt is mine also. When mm -hmm. we are in a karma kanda and doing something for the krishna uh, like uh, cultivating like uh, agriculture we are doing agriculture we are doing samba we are doing go business running family and in this in a, similarly we are also doing devotional service mm. so this is the two things what is one is the karma kanda one is the bhakti so mm. how are you supposed to be which is better not only better it means the when we do something for Krishna, it is called Karmakanda or Bhakti. Okay, so first of all, you should be, you should get a clear meaning of the word Karmakanda. We are not doing Karmakanda. For example, you work on a farm, you go and distribute books, you go and collect money for the temple. That is not Karmakanda, that's Karma Yoga. Don't mix these two words, Karmakanda, Karma Yoga. Karmakanda means worshipping different demigods for sense gratification. That is called karma kanda. Doing activities for the pleasure of Krishna or anything to please Krishna with Krishna in the center of the activities, that is called karma yoga. So don't mix these two. Yes, sir. Right. So when you are, for example, when we get some service in the temple, you may be told, okay, go distribute books go collect some money for the temple. That is not karma kanda. It comes in Krishna consciousness. This is part of bhakti yoga. And not even karma yoga. You are already on a, plat uh, on a platform of bhakti yoga because you are doing it out for the pleasure of the spiritual master. And when it is done under the order of spiritual master, that, that is not even karma yoga. It is bhakti yoga. Is so it clear? Karma but so from karma yoga, you transfer her to bhakti yoga. Yes, there will be when you say bhakti yoga, there is no karmic reaction. Prabhupada gives you an example: if you join the army, and if the captain orders you to go and kill someone in the other army, there is no sinful reaction. Even if it is there, the captain is responsible, not the soldier. So we are soldiers. Our captain is the spiritual master. Or in our case, Sri Prabhupada has appointed all so many captains. And if you are working under them, no reaction. Is it okay? Yes, Prabhupada. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. But nothing should be done for sense gratification. Yes, yes, Prabhupada. Otherwise, you become bonded. For example, you earn money for the, bring money for the temple. Then you say, oh, let me take a part of it. No, don't do that. Each cent belongs to Krishna. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you become bonded. Prabhupada says, if you enjoy the property of Krishna, then there's a very big sinful reaction and you really have to suffer for that. So you have to be very clear in our heart when you serve Krishna. It's not easy to serve Krishna, let me tell you. It's not meant for impious people. It's meant for pious-hearted people, clear-hearted people. So, for example, you are preaching you may be attracted to somebody, but then you should know that our central attraction is Krishna. I'm giving you some tips, yeah? Yes. All right. 
Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you very much, Rukma Prabhuji, for your class and also giving us precious time. I request everyone, please unmute yourself and chant Hare Krishna Mantra once for glorification of His grace, Rukma Prabhuji. Please join. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.